Good evening everyone. On behalf of the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India, Gemin Jewelry Export Promotion Council and the World Diamond Mark Foundation, I, the brand ambassador of GJEPC, Sonam Kapoor, would like to welcome our esteemed dignitaries. Honorable Prime Minister of India, Shri Narendra Bhai Modi, Honorable President of Russian Federation, His Excellency, Mr. Vladimir Putin, on this momentous occasion of the World Diamond Conference. Sir, we are elated and honored with your gracious presence today amongst us. It is indeed an extremely proud moment for all in the world diamond trade. Without taking much of your time, may I please call upon Mr. Whipple Shah, Chairman, GJEPC, for the welcome address. Thank you. Your Excellency, Mr. Vladimir Putin, Honorable President of the Russian Federation, Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Bhai Modi, Madam Srimati Nirmala Sitaraman, Honorable Minister of State for Commerce and Industry, Mr. Anton Situnov, Honorable Finance Minister of the Russian Federation, dignitaries from the Government of India, Government of Russian Federation, colleagues from the Indian and the world diamond and gems and jewelry industry, media, ladies and gentlemen. A hearty welcome to you at the first ever World Diamond Conference held in India by the Gems and Jewelry Export Promotion Council of India, along with the World Diamond Mark, the Department of Commerce, supported by Al Rosa, the largest diamond producing company of the world by carrots and premier organization from the Indian diamond industry. Today, our pride knows no boundary, joy has no barriers, and emotion has no limits as I stand before you on this occasion. 
proud because we have earned the presence of two of the greatest leaders of the two illustrious countries of Russia and India. Joyous because Al Rosa has just signed 12 agreements with 12 Indian firms, which are 12 milestones, and emotional because <laughs> and emotional because we have got the chance to host our very own Narendra Bhai at this conference. It's he who have nurtured this industry in its cradle, Gujarat, and it's he who is showing hope to all of us, the Indians, to move to a new era of growth and prosperity. We share his dream of this industry becoming the largest trading center in the world, and with Bandar coming into operation soon, who knows, India may be the next big mining superpower for diamonds. Your Excellencies, this is indeed a historic moment for the entire diamond industry. As two of the tallest leaders of the modern days have both come to this, the first ever World Diamond Conference. I do not recall any other occasion in our industry when two of the world leaders of this station, His Excellency Vladimir Putin, <laughs> President of Russia and Honorable Sri Narendra Bhai Modi, Prime Minister of India, one a head of a state and the other the head of a government. Two great leaders have together graced an event of this magnitude. It is a great honor for all of us present and speaks volumes about the respect and standing this industry and this event evoke. Relations with Russia are a key pillar to India's, India's foreign policy. India and Russia share a very long and strong relationship that had endured over decades. Maturing over the years today, the countries share a special and privileged strategic partnership. So declared during His Excellency Mr. Putin's visit to India for bilateral talks in 2010, we are confident that during this round of talks, the relationship between India and Russia will reach a new level. The diamond industry of both Russia and India, by virtue of the respective strengths of the two countries, and the position of each in the diamond pipeline are complementary and stand in a position of natural partners. Russia is the largest volume producer of rough diamonds. India is the biggest cutting and polishing center for diamonds. The Indian Diamond Manufacturing Center has an uptake of about 60% of the world's production of rough diamonds by value and 80% by carat volume. India has a 65% share of the world polish market by value 85% in terms of carriage and a stupendous 92% in terms of number of pieces. Russia is also the country with the highest share of the total global spend on exploration activities. From 2011 to 2013, the share of global exploration concentrated in Russia increased from 27% to 54%. Should this exploration yield favorable results, no doubt Russia will look for a stable marketing framework for his added rough, what better destination for rough Russian rough, present and future production could there be than India with its strong technology advance and vast manufacturing capabilities. Today, India can say with confidence and a certain amount of sanguinity that it has reached a preeminent position as a diamond manufacturing center. There are few areas that remain unconquered. It has been the cherished dream and a vision of the GJPC to take India to the next level and to develop it as a world-class diamond trading hub. Towards this, the GJPC has been interacting with the government of India to ensure that supportive policy framework is prepared and put in place to create an enable environment for rough diamond producing companies to come to the country and trade with ease. As I said this morning, and I reiterate, the Indian industry heartily welcomes the written statement of the Minister of State for Commerce and Industry, Honorable Nirmala Man Sitaraman, presented in Parliament a couple of days back, supporting the setting up of special notified zone for trading of rough diamonds. I express the heartfelt gratitude of the Indian diamond industry to the Minister and the Government of India. <laughs> the, the setting up of special notified zone will be a milestone in the realization of the vision to make India a diamond trading hub. The Government of India and GJPC together 
with the Bharat Diamond Booth, join hands in inviting all rough diamond companies to come to India and set up offices and participate in the trading activities in this special notified zone. We hope that Al Rosa will take the lead and be an active and important participant in this activity. We also sincerely wish that all other diamond miners take this opportunity and participate in the rough trading activities in the special notified zone. One of the strongest support to, the to this industry, and I might add, one without which we could not have achieved the success we have, has come from the financial institutions of this country. Banks in India have an exposure of around 40% of the total finance of roughly 14 odd billion dollars advanced by the financial institutions for rough trading activities worldwide. The strong financial backbone has made us that much more agile and sure-footed in the journey to reach the level we have. The Indian government is in the process of devising and implementing provisions for a conductive taxation regime for trading of rough diamonds by mining companies, which will be on par to other leading trading centers. All in all, a favorable climate is being created for the growth of business and industry. Your Excellency, President Putin, we look for your support and blessings on this endeavor and we hope Al Rosa will be a leading mover of such marketing efforts. I am confident as well that we have the support of our own government, which always encourages us to do all that we can do and ensure growth for the industry, the country, and increase and improve employment opportunities for our workforce. And I fervently hope that all countries which have a diamond industry and all the stakeholders of this industry will also stand with us shoulder to shoulder as we move ahead to achieve our goals, a permanent place in the hearts of consumers forever. Thank you. Thank you, Vipul Bhai, for that. Now I would like to request all the dignitaries seated on the dais to join us for the lighting of the lamp. Now I would like to request Srimati Nirmala Sitharaman, Minister of State for Commerce and Industry, to share a few words with us. Your Excellency, Vladimir Putin, Honorable President of uh, the Russian Federation, His Excellency, the popular Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi, Sri Gupul Shah, Chairman, Jensen Jewelry Export Promotion Council, distinguished guests on the dais, um, all the invited audience, the August gathering, friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen. Today, as we gather here at the World Diamond Conference, we take pride in the fact that it was in the early years of the decade of the 50s when we, the Ministry of Commerce, identified the diamond sector as a true diamond in itself and promoted this labor-intensive inten industry. In time, we have proved our mettle, and today we are the world's leading exporters of cut and polished diamonds. From its small origins in the 50s, the diamond
sector has established itself as the world's largest manufacturing center of cut and polished diamonds for the last many years, contributing 70% of the world's supply in terms of value, 85% in terms of volume, and 92% in terms of pieces. Surat, along with Navsari, Bhavnagar, Amreli, are known as the diamond manufacturing and processing hubs, whereas Mumbai is the diamond trading hub. India's position in the diamond processing trade in the world can be appreciated by the fact that 14 out of 15 diamonds, I repeat, 14 out of 15 diamonds in the world are being cut and polished in India. <laughs> this preeminent position has been achieved through hard work of our people and the progressive liberalization of the government policies, entrepreneurship, skilled labor, and so on. India has achieved global leadership position in the business of cutting and polishing diamonds, also due to its price competitiveness and willingness to work for low margins. I would like to take this as an opportunity to stress that we in the Ministry of Commerce supported and promoted the sector in its initial phases, wherein we eased the trade of rough diamonds to India, which in itself provided a smooth takeoff for this industry. Since then, the growth in the diamond sector and progressive improvement in the value addition chain have been contributing in the nation's industrial development. Major segment of the Indian diamond industry have been the unorganized sector, many of which are running family-owned businesses. The diamond manufacturing sector consists of large number of small and medium units employing skilled and semi-skilled labor almost entirely in the unorganized sector. Having said all this, I would like to mention that our commitment towards this industry is unequivocal. We have supported the cause of eradication of conflict diamonds in India and worldwide by being a founder member of the Kim Kimberley Process Certification Scheme. India still has tremendous potential, not yet exploited, for diamond sector exports. India has, in current, largest artisans for making jewelry in the world. Practically every village boasts of a family of artisans having a very long tradition of jewelry making. This industry is an example of make in India, which is the vision Make in India, which is the vision of our Honorable Prime Minister, we have achieved the number one position in the world for manufacturing of diamonds. As you know, and as you all know, that we have continued to encourage and support the diamond sector. In this regard, we laud the efforts of the organization of this conference that it has consolidated the industry all under one roof. We realize that the sector has been experiencing a weakening demand and that, a, and that the consumer demand for diamonds need a tremendous boost. Thus, we, we along the organization of the World Diamond Conference have partnered this conference since we believe India is an important constituent of this sector. Through this conference, we aim to address the most urgent issues being faced by the diamond industry at present, the revival of consumer enthusiasm for diamonds and the consequent increase of market share for diamond jewelry in the luxury sector. Before I conclude, I would like to thank all of you for being a part of our celebration of this golden child, the diamond industry in India, and we hope to begin a new chapter in the history of this diamond industry. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam, for your kind words. May, may I please call upon our guest, Honorable President of Russian Federation, His Excellency Vladimir Putin, to share a few words. Уважаемый господин премьер-министр. Uh, 
Уважаемые дамы и господа, сегодня в Дели проходит первая всемирная алмазная конференция. Она первая, ну а я, разумеется, вообще в первый раз на мероприятиях подобного рода. И, честно говоря, когда посмотрел в зал, после того, как пришел сюда, несколько удивился. Потому что единственный человек, который так или иначе, на первый взгляд, связан с производством алмазов и производством бриллиантов, это наши замечательные ведущие. Все остальные как-то скромно одеты для людей, которые занимаются бриллиантами. Но... Но отрасль, безусловно, очень важная для многих стран, и для Индии, и для России. Индия издревле славилась своими ювелирами, искусными мастерами огранки алмазов. Их изделия всегда высоко ценились во всем мире. С Индией связаны и одни из самых знаменитых в истории нашей страны, в истории России, бриллианты. Это бриллиант под, на, под именем Орлов, украсивший императорский скипетр нашей императрицы Екатерины Великой, и бриллиант Шах, подаренный когда-то императору Николаю I, правителем Персии. Эти камни индийского происхождения – настоящая гордость российского алмазного фонда в Кремле. И сегодня Индия сохраняет за собой статус крупнейшего изготовителя бриллиантов. На ее долю приходится более 65, как мы слышали, процентов ежегодного мирового производства этих драгоценных камней. В России также уделяют серьезное внимание развитию алмазодобывающей отрасли. Мы обладаем круп крупнейшими, уникальными запасами алмазного сырья. Их совокупный объем по текущим оценкам составляет более миллиарда карат. Мы Занимаем уверенно первое место в мире по этому показателю. Особо отмечу, что Россия всегда ответственно подходит к вопросам регулирования международного бизнеса в этой сфере. Добивается максимальной открытости сотрудничества, в том числе в рамках Кимберлийского процесса. Компания Алроса, российская компания Алроса, на долю которой приходится 99% алмаза добычи в России, обеспечивает до четверти всего мирового экспорта необработанных алмазов. Надо сказать, что и другие наши российские компании также включаются в эту работу, в том числе абсолютно частные компании. Они вкладывают уже очень солидные ресурсы в свои крупные проекты. Почти 50% поставок российского сырья приходится на Индию или на контролируемые индийским капиталом компании. С учетом таких солидных объемов алмазных сделок, желательно продумать вопрос о формировании более продвинутых схем взаимодействия и о налаживании тесной кооперации между странами. В том числе мы приглашаем наших уважаемых коллег для работы в области агранта на территории Российской Федерации. Мы с господином Моди подробно обсудили эти вопросы, дали указания заинтересованным госструктурам максимально повысить отдачу от алмазного бизнеса для наших государств. Соответственно, ориентируем и деловые круги. Для более эффективного сотрудничества нужно создавать благоприятные условия, создавать административные и таможенные процедуры, улучшать эти процедуры, создавать более благоприятные возможности, повышать уровень безопасности. Настроены в этом плане на совместную и результативную работу. Уважаемые друзья, Международная алмазная конференция привлекает к себе огромный интерес. Уверен, проведение такого представительного форума станет хорошей традицией. Позвольте призвать всем участникам плодотворной работы и всего самого-самого доброго. Thank you, Your Excellency. We are really honored to hear such enlightened words from you. May I kindly request the Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Bhai Modi, to share a few words with us.
President Putin, Your Excellency President Simati Putin, Nirmala Sitaraman, Srimati Nirmala Sitaraman, Finance Minister Mr. Minton, Finance Minister Mr. Mintera, Sri Vipul Shah, Sri Vipul Shah, Ladies and Gentlemen. I am delighted that Delhi is hosting the World Diamond Conference. We are especially pleased that President Putin here with us today. He is a leader of India's key strategic partner and a personally a great friend of India. In addition, Russia is the source of more than a quarter of the world's production of diamonds. I understand that this is the first conference of its kind in the world. This is a source of great pride for us. I want to congratulate and thank Gem and Jewelry Export Promotion Council, the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, and the World Diamond Mark for organizing this event. India is the natural venue for this conference. For one, it is generally believed that Diamond is India's gift to the world. More than 2,000 years ago, diamond was deeply valued in India. And now Putin Ji ki bhi bata rahe the ki kis prakar se Bharat ka hira dunia mein jag maga raha tha. It was even traded with China over the Silk Route. Till about the 18th century, India was considered to the only source of diamond. Till, of course, the world began mining for diamond in Africa. I am delighted that South Africa's Minister for Mineral Resources is with us today. Thank you. I welcome you here. Today, India is the world's largest center for cutting and polishing diamond and its largest importer of uncut diamond. Diamond has become a universal symbol of wealth and enduring love. But in India, it is also a great source of jobs for our people. The gem and jewelry sector in India employs nearly 3.5 million people. One million of them work in the diamond industry. And in your mind, gems and jewelry, where there are about 45,000,000 people who get a job. And in that, 10,000,000 people are working in diamond industry. India today exports cut and polished diamond worth 20 billion US dollars. Surat has emerged as the biggest center in the world for cutting and polishing diamond. And this is why I say that in about 30% of the diamond Russia gives it to Russia. और इसलिए मुझे लगता है कि हर डायमंड पर जब डायमंड यात्रा करता है रशिया से तो हर डायमंड पर रशिया के कदमों के निशान होते हैं लेकिन जब एक पॉलिश डायमंड निकलता है तो उसके ऊपर 
इंडिया की उंगली के निशान होते हैं इट हर्ट्स एंटरप्राइज विद सम ऑफ द मोस्ट एडवांस टेक्नोलॉजीज एंड मशीनरी इन द वर्ल्ड ऑल दो द भारत डायमंड बोर्ड्स वॉज एस्टाब्लिश इन ट्वेंटी टेन इट हैज बिकम द वर्ल्ड्स लार्जेस्ट एक्सचेंज इन द वर्ल्ड फ्यू इन इंडिया वुड बी अवेयर दैट आउट ऑफ टेन पॉलिश डायमंड pieces sold globally nine have been processed in india and the duniya ka koi bhi vyakti agar heere jawarat se saja hua hai to maan lena ki 10 mein se 9 hero par kisi na kisi bhartiya ki ungli lagi hui hai the diamond sparkle in the world abuse of the skill of indian workers so we welcome the efforts of this conference and the world mark foundation to increase the global market for diamond however rough diamond in india comes from abroad and it mostly comes indirectly through places like antwerp and dubai of course antwerp trade is now run mainly by indians while most of rub diamonds from russia come to india less than 20% comes directly to india we have with us today the head of russian company alroza which controls most of the production and trade in rub diamonds in russia it has direct sales contract with seven to eight D indian companies i know that there are representatives of many boards here but i will be honest and say that i want major diamond mining companies to sell directly to the indian diamond industry it will be good for them and for india i have made three proposals to president putin first i would like alroza to have direct long term contracts with more indian companies i am pleased to know that they are moving in that direction second i want al roza and others to trade directly on our bourse we have decided to create a special notified zone in which major mining companies can import rub diamonds on a consignment base and re-export unsold ones this is going to this is going to benefit indian diamond industry and create more jobs for our youth third i ask president putin to reform regulation so that russian jewelry market can send the rub diamonds to india and reimport polished diamond without paying duty this will give a boost to our diamond industry this measures will also boost india russia economic ties india and russia had outstanding cooperation in a broad range of areas we want to focus on transforming our economic relation we want to make this a key pillar of our relationship our joint partnership here is an indication of 
our new approach to expand our economic partnership. President Putin's enthusiasm for Russia participation in our Make in India program will help expand manufacturing and create jobs for our people. There are many other sectors in India, like the diamond industry, which have a huge potential for creating employment and generating exports. That modernization and development is a great priority to my government. I am deeply encouraged by the level of international participation. In every sector of business, you will find that India not only offers productive business opportunities, but it is also easy to work in. You will find an environment that is welcoming and responsive. Thank you all for coming. Thanks a lot. एक बात और भी बता दूं जब मैं ऑस्ट्रेलिया में प्रेसिडेंट पुतिन से मिला था तो उस दिन मैंने ऐसे ही चाय पर हम गप्पे मार रहे थे तो मैंने बात निकाली मैंने उनसे कहा कि आप डायमंड के संबंध में भारत के कारोबार को देखिए आप सोचिए क्या हो सकता है उन्होंने कहा ऐसा करो आपके इस विषय को जानने वाले व्यक्ति को मेरे पास भेज दो और उन्होंने अपने वित्त मंत्री को इस काम के लिए लगाया और मैं देख रहा हूं कि हम ऑस्ट्रेलिया में मिले और उसके बीच आज मुश्किल से पंद्रह दिन हुए हैं लेकिन पंद्रह दिन में इस विषय को उन्होंने बहुत आगे बढ़ाया आज स्वयं भी यहां मौजूद रहे और आज दिन भर भी इस विषय की काफी मेरी बात हुई है और मैं मानता हूं कि रशिया और भारत डायमंड के क्षेत्र में अगर जुड़ जाएं तो सिर्फ डायमंड चमकेगा ऐसा नहीं डायमंड पूरी दुनिया को चमकाएगा बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद Thank you so much sir Lastly I would like to request Mr Pankaj Parekh vice chairman of GJ EPC to express his gratitude Namaste Honorable excellencies on the dais respected ladies and gentlemen in the audience on this momentous occasion of the world diamond conference where the world has come together as one to celebrate the industry and further augment and carry forward the environment of growth and prosperity i would like to take few moments to express my heartfelt gratitude to the illustrious group of people who are here with us today without whose support this congregation of the best wouldn't have been possible firstly i would like to thank excellency vladimir putin honorable president of russian federation and honorable prime minister of india shri narendra modi ji for gracing us with their august presence and making this a historical event in the chapter of global diamond industry Shrimati Nirmala Sitaraman ji honorable minister commerce and industries of India who has been the pioneer to ensure that this conference takes place ma'am we are really grateful to you mr vipul shah a chairman of gjepc who has been extremely passionate relentless and devoted in creating a healthier and more conducive diamond environment mr rajiv kher Commerce Secretary Mr Hasmukh Adhia Secretary of Department of Financial Services and all all I mean all 
other senior government officials, government of, of, government of India, and the captains of diamond industry from across the world here. My heartfelt gratitude to one and all of you sirs. I would also like to extend my grateful uh, appreciation to Advocate Ramathodi, Minister of Minerals, South Africa, for his presence. Mr. Anton Siluvia, Honorable Finance Minister, Russian Federation, and Mr. Elias Raishin, Acting President Al Rosa, for their presence here today and their extensive support for grand success of this conference. And Alex Papo of World Diamond Mark Foundation for being an integral part of, with us for organizing this conference. One person who religiously led us right from the concept stage till this execution is His Excellency Mr. P.S. Raghavan, sir, the Ambassador of India in Russia. We are equally grateful to the encouragement that we have received from His Excellency Mr. Alexander Alex Kadakin, Ambassador of Russia in India. Our grateful gratitude goes to Mr. Ajay Basaria, Joint Secretary, Ministry of External Affairs, who has been a silent force behind our endeavor. I express my sincere gratitude to one and all present here this evening. Thank you very much.